Hey beautiful people, I am back. The braids are back. Stay tuned for the Hair Chronicles. I'm only joking. Stay tuned for the gig review we have for you. So guys, this gig review is kind of interesting because it took place at Indigo 2, which is the smaller venue at the O2 Arena. And it was for a group that I kind of grew up listening to, En Vogue. I got last minute tickets, or rather my friend Delia got last minute tickets to go see En Vogue. And I was so excited to go. Not only because it's En Vogue, but I hadn't been out to a gig at, at that level for a very long time. So first of all, got to the O2. It was fairly easy to get in. Normally that venue is pretty packed. And also Sam Smith was playing in the arena the same day. So I thought, oh my God, I'm gonna get there and it's gonna be super packed. But actually it was pretty okay. Got into the venue. Another sad thing, so my friend Louise Golby, who's an amazing artist, was supposed to support her and for some reason she didn't. I must ask her why, but I was a little bit disappointed about that. However, when I got there, the DJ was just playing the best tunes, like 90s, noughties, R&B, soul, had some throwback Luther in there. It was like a great mix of music, appropriate for the gig that I was about to watch. Is there anyone not from London in here tonight? Make some noise. Anyone from London in here tonight? Make some noise. So, DJ Volatile, you did an incredible job warming up the crowd in the absence of a warm-up act because um, normally the warm-up act would kind of get the crowd ready for the big show. So first things first, I have to say, when I got in the venue, I saw three mics standing, obviously, and I saw no band equipment, which disappointed me a great deal. And these reviews, I have to be honest, because I could say all the amazing things, but that really did disappoint me. As a person who really loves live music, I figured that because there was no band equipment that it was gonna be a backing track gig, which it was. And I have to say, I was super disappointed. Um, I do understand budget constraints because obviously when you're an artist in that kind of space, it's, it's costly, it costs a lot of money to put on a show like that and then to have band and pay them and all that kind of stuff. So I do understand that it's not always possible, but I did feel like an artist or a group such as Envo with that, of that caliber really should have had a band. And I understand all the, back, back, all the other factors, but I felt like that was an essential piece of the show. So that was disappointing from the jump. So they came out, they started and they started with a hit song. And I'm like, I'm not like, I don't know in those whole back catalog, but they got some jams. And so when they came out and they started, I was like, yeah, you got the, you got the real throwback records that I like to listen to. So I was impressed by the, the starting number, which was Don't Let Go. That was a big, big track when it was, when it came out. And also it's been a big track since it came out. that one of the members of the group was different. So the original lineup, only two of the members were there and they had a new member who was obviously added because two of the other men members had left. Now I'm not gonna mention any names because you, if you're an En Vogue fan, you probably already know who that is. And if you're not an En Vogue fan, I wouldn't wanna ruin the whole experience for you. I think it's something you should check out. But obviously when you see a lineup and it's not the original lineup, you kind of get a little bit disappointed. And I don't want to make this a spiral of dip disappointment, but En Vogue is somebody, a group that I grew up listening to. So you kind of know the, the formation, you know the songs, you know the, the routines and stuff like that. Um, and they did a great job. They came out, it was choreographed, it was strong, it was polished. I like that a lot. But obviously with a different member, you kind of like, who is that? But the girl can sing. Like, go and check it out if you can. Um, check out En Vogue's Instagram, Facebook, whatever other social media on, check it out. So they came out, did that song, and they had a new album that they were releasing the same night or the night before they, it released on iTunes. So they were promoting a lot of the tunes from their new record. 
um, I think a lot of people didn't know that they were releasing a record, so they were kind of like, what is this? This doesn't sound familiar. But obviously, they then introduced and said that they had just put out a record with <clears throat> Babyface and a few other producers, well-known producers, that had produced for them in their early days and also produced for other artists like Janet Jackson, like big names. So you kind of think, well, they're going to be big tracks. So obviously, when a song is unfamiliar, people kind they don't zone out, but they don't, engage as much and so I noticed that times when they were doing some of their new record or new tracks people didn't really engage as much but as soon as they started to do hit records or, or songs that people knew very well you could see them re-engage. Really and they stay really interestingly and very intelligently put the tracks in between so you got a track that you're familiar with with a couple of tracks that you're not familiar with then sandwiched with a track that they know so it was the the kind of set list was well designed in order to keep people interested for the tracks that they weren't familiar with so i thought that was a really good way to introduce their new material um they look fantastic they look amazing like they're in their 50s 60s now and so for a group of women who have been out since the 80s essentially looking like they're 30 is like a massive achievement especially in this industry because people do age and they age in front of you so when you haven't seen them for a long time you kind of think oh wow but they looked so fit their outfits were really cool really sexy traditional girl group look but you know obviously older and i like it's hard it's hard to keep your that you know that level of energy that level of sass that level of sexiness in into your 50s and 60s especially because nowadays a lot of people's careers don't even last that long. So for them to be still out now in this time when so many more artists have come out and so many different kinds of genres are popular now, for them to be still doing their thing, salute. That is a big deal for me. Long career longevity is something that I feel is rare these days and for them to be still out doing their thing I think you know what mad respect as the night progressed they introduced some of their their hits and some of their new songs I think it's out now it's called so electric soul cafe and um, they were kind of doing a few records it was super polished like I feel like they had rehearsed all the routines rehearsed all the lines and what who was gonna speak when it was just like really well thought through and I think girl groups of the 80s and 90s really had that that kind of thing down pat they had it tight um which is kind of rare nowadays but the one thing i will say is that i didn't feel like i got them coming out at me in terms of their individual personalities which i was kind of like mm, not sure but because they've got a back catalogue of hits you kind of just take it for what it is so in terms of wrapping up i do feel like the backing track Although it was live, so it wasn't just like a um, studio backing track. They obviously had live musicians play the backing track, so it felt like it was a live recording. But at the same time, you miss the spontaneity of having a band and being able to do different things at different times. When you've got a backing track, you basically have to stick to the format of the track. Um, the sound was okay. It was okay. As there was times where there's a little bit of feedback, and there was times where certain people weren't loud enough. But you know these things happen on live gigs as kind of part and parcel of the process um all in all they've got some mad hits but i personally don't feel like the backing tracks and the sound brought the whole show to life i loved them i loved their outfits i loved the way that they came out i loved the way they were pos polished i loved the routines and the choreography i just felt like it was a little bit short in terms of like the whole spectacle and the whole show. And then Vogue are a massive band. So I'm a little bit disappointed if I'm honest. However, I will always love them. If you get the chance to check out their music, please do. 
because I think they're an amazing set of vocalists and amazing women, beautiful women, super fit, something to aspire to. And for them to be in this game for this long, you know what, hats off. Not everybody can do it, but they are. And so respect on that level. So guys, I don't know if you were there, but let me know what you think. And if you're a fan of En Vogue, let me know too. Hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos we post. We post every single week. We're also on Snapchat, Google+, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We're on the works. So let let us know if you've got any pictures or videos, post them on your page and tag us in there. We'd love to see them. All that remains for me to say is stay tuned for more gig reviews and see you next time. Bye.